everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine. And I'm here today with a really exciting video for you. It is a collaboration video with none other than Juliet Uzo. Now Juliet, if you don't already know, won last year's Great British Sewing Bee. She is a wonderful, knowledgeable, talented sewist but also she's got a really infectious, fun personality. So I love following her on Instagram and on YouTube. And when we got in touch with each other to arrange a little collaboration, I was very excited. So we weren't exactly sure what we wanted to do for our collaboration. Obviously, Juliet lives in London. I live in Newcastle. We couldn't really arrange to get together to film the videos. So we were going to have to do something from afar. And we sort of left it and we were gonna think about what to do. And then Juliet sent me a message and asked me if I was planning on making anything else from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Because I had posted a picture of the first make from this book, which was the Bertha Cardigan. So Juliet asked if I had plans to make anything else. And I said, yes, I would really like to make the dungarees or the Tabitha t-shirt dress. And Juliet said, well, what about if we do the same pattern in our own ways and then that could be our collaboration. So I was well up for that. And we decided on the Tabitha t-shirt dress. So we decided that we wouldn't actually communicate with each other about our plans, our fabrics, our tweaks that we were going to make, anything like that. It was all going to be a surprise. So I have no idea what Juliet has done. But when I started to think about what I wanted to do, I wanted to bring a little bit of Juliet into my make and Juliet likes to work a lot with African wax fabric. Now, the Tabitha t-shirt dress is made for a stretch, like a jersey, so that wasn't going to be suitable. So I got thinking about the very first Great British Sewing Bee episode last year where Juliet made an incredible jumpsuit combining two different fabrics, and it was just wonderful. And from that moment, she was my winner. It was incredible. So I thought, why don't I incorporate two different fabrics into my t-shirt dress? Now I'd seen on Instagram, a couple of people have made the t-shirt dress with a different fabric on the top to a different fabric on the bottom, but I wanted to be a little bit more different than that. So I came up with the idea of color blocking and actually dividing the dress up into sections. I had a little look on Pinterest, got some ideas, and then I made a, <laughs> a questionable sketch of my plan. We'll put it in here. Please don't laugh at my appalling drawing skills. But I basically wanted to split the t-shirt dress into quarters and then sort of alternate the fabrics. And as you can see, I am wearing it. So I did go ahead with that plan. I was thinking about ordering fabric online, but for this, I really wanted to go into store to choose the fabrics that would work best. So I headed to First for Fabrics, my local fabric store, and I started to have a little browse. Now, I think my more introverted style took over because I wasn't quite bold enough to go for the real clashing prints or, you know, some some quite bold contrasting fabrics. So I ended up going for two fabrics that worked really well together colour-wise, one patterned and one plain. So as you can see from what I'm wearing, I've got the pattern fabric here, which is just a cotton jersey with this floral design and it's got some little birds on and the birds are grey. So then I matched it up with just a plain cotton jersey in grey and the colours work really, really well together, I think, because the grey picks out the grey in the flower stems and also the birds. In terms of quantity for each fabric, I got a metre and a quarter of each one because I needed around two and a half metres for the whole dress. So a metre and a quarter of each one should be fine. So I pre-washed my fabric, dried it, and I was ready to get going. So the Tabitha t-shirt dress is this one. There's my beautiful friend Sam, purple sewing cloud, as the model. And you can make it with short sleeves, three quarter sleeves or long sleeves, and you can make the skirt any length you really want. And it has a drawstring to bring in the waist. So I started to think about what I would need to do to my pattern pieces in order to achieve this look. So you cut one front bodice piece on the fold and one back bodice piece on the fold. So all I did to achieve this look was I traced off the front and the back bodice piece 
but instead of drawing in where the fold line would be, I added a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance to that piece and I cut that out as my front piece and my back piece. The sleeves were just as normal, no changes there. The neckband as normal, no changes there. Then when it comes to the skirt piece, it doesn't give you a pattern piece for the skirt, it actually gives you instructions on how to construct that. So the instructions are on page 88 of the book and it gives you the dimensions and what exactly you need to do to draw that. Just one word of warning, there is a mistake on this image here. They are aware at Tilly and the Buttons, I think a few people have messaged them to tell them, but it tells you to place this side on the fold when actually it's this side that you place on the fold. Over here it's done correctly, so on the lay plan it's correct, but there's just a little mistake there, so that just be careful if you're making it. But I didn't want to have a full line. Again, I added 5 eighths of an inch for my seam allowance and that's the pattern piece that I cut out. So I used my drawing to help me know which pattern pieces I needed to cut out of which fabrics and which way around I needed to have them. So I cut everything out on a single layer to make sure I was doing it all correct. And I had to flip some of my pattern pieces to make sure that I was getting the pattern piece on this side of the front bodice and on that side of the back bodice, for example. So if you're going to do something similar, just make sure you've got a little sketch and you can plan out exactly which pieces you need out of which fabrics. Now, as I'm sure most of you or all of you are aware, I am pregnant and I'm currently 24 weeks pregnant. I'll be 25 weeks pregnant on Tuesday and I needed to think about the size that I was going to make. Now, this isn't supposed to be a really fitted dress. It is supposed to be sort of a baggy t-shirt style and then the drawstring waist brings it in a bit. So I took my measurements and decided to cut out a size five at the shoulders and size five sleeves. And then I graded here to a six for the bust and the waist. I'm not sure if I needed to do that. I could have stuck to a five because the waist is quite loose, but I think it's supposed to be that way. And potentially my bust is still going to increase as I get closer to my due date. I think I've probably done the right thing. Then for the skirt, it tells you how to work out the size of your skirt piece. So you take your hip measurement and then you do some maths with that and it works it all out for you. To work out the length of the skirt, you simply hold up a tape measure to your natural waist and you drop it down to where you want it to finish and that's your measurement. You also need to add your seam allowance at the bottom as well. So once I'd traced off all my pattern pieces and I'd cut out all of my pieces of fabric, I was ready to go. The first thing that I decided to do before I started following the instructions in the book was to make my front bodice piece one piece of fabric. So I sewed down the middle here, I used my overlocker for that. I did the same for my back bodice piece, my front skirt piece and my back skirt piece, just so that I was then following the instructions from the book as they were. So I made sure that all of my separate pieces of fabric for my colour blocking were ne then one piece of fabric like they are in the book. So then the next thing that you do is you actually follow the instructions for the t-shirt and you make the t-shirt up to step 14. So that's all of this part, the sleeves, the neck band, the front and the back bodice piece, the side seams, all of that, you completely make the t-shirt. That was a really smooth process. The only thing that happened was once I'd done that, I tried it on and the arms were really loose. So I actually decided to take the arms in a bit further. So from just under the armpit area here, then all the way to the hem of the sleeves or the, the base of the sleeves, I took it in an extra 5 eighths of an inch just to bring the sleeves in a bit. Now they are still a little bit loose, but I don't want them to be completely skin tight. So I'm much happy with them like that. Then it was time to construct the skirt. The first thing it asks you to do is stitch the side seams of the skirt. Actually, no, it doesn't. <laughs> the first thing it asks you to do is to make the holes for the drawstring on the top of the front skirt piece. You can do those either with eyelets or with buttonholes. I chose buttonholes for mine, but either would work perfectly well. Then you're going to sew the side seams, but I was going to make a couple of changes to mine so I needed to do those first before I actually sewed my side seams. So I wanted to add a little bit of gathering at the sides of the skirt around where my bump is in order to provide some extra fabric for bump growth. So all I did, 
actually I did this <laughs> on my pattern piece so when I was making my pattern pieces earlier I actually did this to my front skirt pattern piece I took a little cut so I cut my pattern piece of my skirt in the center of this section here of the skirt piece so I just cut that there and then I separated them the top and the bottom and I added an extra 10 centimeters so I just put a new piece of tracing paper behind stuck my top and my bottom piece down and graded the line so I just made sure that the line met up if that makes sense <laughs> so I'd done that obviously on my pattern piece and then cut out the pattern pieces out of the fabric at that correct size so then I had snipped a little snip at each side where that extra amount of fabric was and I sewed a line of straight stitches down between each of those snips down the side of my two skirt pieces that was then going to be for my gathering I also decided that I wanted to have a split down each of the side seams coming up from the hem up a little way I wasn't sure how far I wanted it I held the back skirt piece up to me and I asked my husband where he thought the splits should go up to and we simply put a little clip into that point. I then came and measured from the bottom of the skirt up to that point and I took that same measurement and cut a snip out of the side of each front skirt piece and the side of each back skirt piece to show me where my split needed to go up to. I made that snip 5 eighths of an inch. So I cut into the skirt pieces 5 eighths of an inch at that point. I then used my overlocker to finish the side seams below that point so below my snips on the front and the back I finished with my overlocker without trimming anything off then I clipped my front and my back skirt pieces together except for the excess fabric that I was going to gather so I clipped them up the rest of the way then I could gather in those gathering stitches because I knew how long the fabric needed to be in order to match up with the back fabric I hope this is making sense. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> then once I've gathered it to the right amount I clipped that and then I simply overlocked from the top of the skirt pieces down to where I had snipped in for my splits to start. So I only overlocked them together up to that point. Then I came upon a little problem. <laughs> so everything didn't go smoothly in the making of this. It is a very simple make but I made a little mistake and I think it's important to be honest about these things. So on one of the sides where I had overlocked the side seam I'd actually caught a bit of the fabric underneath so I'd folded a bit of fabric into the overlocking stitches. That's fine, I thought I'll just unpick it, that's okay. When I unpicked it I obviously wasn't careful enough and I created a little hole in my fabric which wasn't then fixable. So what I did was I tried to overlock again just trapping in that bit where the hole was but I kept missing it and then it was just making that seam bulkier and bulkier because I was overlocking over and over again. So by this point I was feeling really tired and I thought I'm just gonna leave it I'll come back to it tomorrow it's fine. So that was last night. This morning I came back to it with a fresh mindset. I tried on the skirt piece and actually realised I had a lot of space, a lot of spare fabric at the sides. So I thought, great, I can just overlock all the way down to the top of the... where the splits were going to start. I can just trim off all of my overlocking that's already there and have fresh overlocking, which would just be one layer of overlocking. So I did exactly that and it worked absolutely fine. Solved my problem, got rid of the hole, got rid of all the bulky overlocking on that side. Brilliant. So I was then ready to carry on and make the rest of my dress and put it all together. So I just followed the rest of the steps and it came together really, really well. It was a breeze, to be honest. I didn't find any of the rest of it difficult. It all came together really nicely. So that was it, my dress was done. I followed all of the steps, hemmed it. I did take an extra two inches off each sleeve I'm finding I'm having to do that quite a bit recently so I'm wondering if my arms are a little bit shorter than average. Yeah I took two inches off each sleeve before I hemmed them. Ah oh, just to tell you how I did the splits so not did the actual splits I can't do those I'm not very flexible <laughs> but how I sewed up the splits on the skirt. So after I'd turned up the hem at the bottom of the skirt on the front and the back skirt piece and I'd zigzagged those I then took each of my splits and I just pressed them wrong sides together, clipped them and did a zigzag stitch starting from the bottom 
I should do it here really, or here. <laughs> Starting from the bottom of the skirt, up one side of the split, across the top, and then down the other side of the split. I then went back and I just did another row of stitching across the top of the split just to secure it. And I did that on the other side and that's worked really well. And I just like having splits because they just give you a bit of extra movement when you walk in and yeah, just add a little bit of something. So that's my Tabitha t-shirt dress. I really hope that you like it and I really hope that Juliet likes it. The inspiration for the colour blocking was purely from Juliet. And I know it's not as bold and as brave as the things that she usually does, like the jumpsuit with the polka dot and the African wax, but it's my sort of, my take on it, my version. Yeah, so overall I am really happy. I keep looking at it and thinking, mm, am I 100% happy? I think because of me being pregnant and knowing that our body's going to grow, the sizing of things is a little bit tricky at the minute anyway because I don't want to make something that fits really really well and then in two weeks time won't fit me. So I think I'm erring on the side of caution with things and making things a little bit bigger than they need to be so it accommodates my bump as it grows but that's fine. Also, the two fabrics that I use, they're beautiful quality. The gray one is a Stoff of Denmark jersey, and then this one's just a cotton jersey. But the patterned one is slightly thicker than the plain one. So the plain one is sort of showing up, as you can see, like every little wrinkle, it's showing up. Whereas the patterned one doesn't really. So that's only a little a little thing but it's not enough to put me off. I really love it, it's super comfortable and I think I am going to get a lot of wear out of it. I definitely would make another one, possibly a short sleeved one for the summer but once I do have my baby I'm hoping to breastfeed so it's probably not the most ideal thing to be wearing when I'm breastfeeding because I would have to take the whole thing off. So yeah I might wait until next summer <laughs> before I make another one because I don't want to waste fabric when we don't need to. So if you don't have the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book I would really recommend it. There's so many awesome patterns in here. I would also recommend checking out a YouTube video by a lady called Liz and her channel is The Baker Who Sews. She posted a video yesterday of all of her makes from this book and she's made everything in the book which is amazing. I think the book has however many different patterns but then lots of different variations and Liz has even made variations of them so it's a really good video I would recommend you going and watching that and subscribing to her channel. I know that Juliet also did a book review of this when it first came out so if you go back through Juliet's videos and you can find a review of this whole book then that would really be worth watching as well. Another thing that's great about this book is it actually has the patterns in Tilly's extended size range. So Tilly's patterns used to go from sizes one to eight, which were a size UK six to 20. And now they actually go from one to 10. So from a UK size six to 24. So that's fantastic. To get the patterns, they are all in the back and they come on big sheets of paper, but they are layered and they're double-sided. What I did was I actually sent mine all off to net printer to get them printed out AO. The only reason that I did trace enough for this one was because I was going to colour block and I needed to adjust the pattern pieces. So otherwise I would have just cut them out because I've got the PDFs printed. You can also print them out at home on A4. The instructions for how to get them printed are on page nine of the book. So I think that's everything I've got to say on this pattern. I would love to hear if you have made it and what you think of it and also what you think of my version. I'd really love you to go over to Juliet's channel and have a look at her video and see her version and her take on the pattern and her thoughts as well. Thank you so much to Juliet for doing this collaboration with me. It's been really really fun and thank you all for watching. If you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me. I hope you're all having a lovely day Thank you for watching and happy sewing. Bye. Yeah, it's not the right button, is it? It's uh, this one.